Hello everybody and welcome back. We are underwater. Why are we underwater? Well, if you remember two weeks ago, I launched this contraption with the sole purpose of splashing it down safely, mind you, on the surface of the ocean in front of the Kerbal Space Center. You might wonder what's inside of this thing and well, we're going to find out right about now because yes, we are going to launch this thing Sea Dragon style. Yes, this is sinking very nicely over here. So the idea was to, as much as possible, submerge the rocket and then launch it from underwater. In order to keep it down, I used a lot of ballast tanks. And we're going to launch this right now. Separation complete, we're rising above the water. And we're free of the surface and ascending into the blue and clear skies of Kerbin. Well, I still haven't told you what's in that fairing, but if you stick around just for a few more seconds, then you will see it. Okay, first stage separation coming up, we're just getting rid of those side boosters. And, by the way, destroying one of the main engines, but we're still having enough thrust to get this thing into orbit. Anyways, not something that would work in the real world. Okay, second stage separation, or basically the main stage is going to be separated. Yeah, this looks like almost like a Saturn V first stage with a lot more F1 engines, to be honest. Okay, second stage boosting into the sky. We're going to use this to get out of the atmosphere and then also beginning our circularization maneuver. And here it is, my payload. Yes, this is a nice little space cruiser. And this is kind of reminiscent of one of my first big cruiser things I did back in 2014, 15, something like that. And I decided to, well, use the new parts and new skills I've acquired since then to, well, do it sort of again. We're using our main engines of the cruiser to perform the final stretch of the burn. And since there is no crew on board yet, I didn't want to risk them by doing that entire water submerge and launch from underwater thing. We're now going to get the crew up into orbit. In order to do that, we're using a state-of-the-art single stage to orbit space plane. You can see the debris back down there. Okay, this is just a really quick launch. We're now already out of the atmosphere. Extending the solar panels. Yeah, since those rapier engines don't produce any electricity, it's very important to have something on board that generates some. And after some maneuvers to get our rendezvous, we are now going to dock with our cruiser. So let's fire this up. And we're a little bit too fast. Good thing we didn't destroy it, nevertheless... Again! Yes. After another approach, we managed to get this thing uh, docked very nicely. Then the crew was transferred over, 8 kerbals in total. And then this thing is headed down again. Goodbye, Stingray! All right, moving into position to get away from our cruiser. And we're firing right now. There we go. Now that that's gone, well, it's time to find a destination for this. Uh, the original iteration I called the Battle Cruiser 1 back in, well, a few years ago. Uh, but since this does not have any weapons, it kind of is a futile name. 
Anyhow, we're going to go on an extended mission with this. And basically, this is just to showcase what this thing could do in theory and can do in practice. But first, we're gonna have a look at it. Yeah, we have a few docking ports, we have a relay. Why? Well, you're gonna see that later on. And we also have a science lab. So this is fully equipped for quite some interesting missions, possibly. And you can also see some lander in there, in that tube. You may notice this is by far not the largest cruiser I have ever built. But yeah, once in a while I try to get a little more practical and have a little bit more frame rate than one frame per second. Those builds can be really tedious, although I like to have a challenge once in a while. Alright, another beauty shot of that cruiser. And with extended solar panels, we can now get ready to perform our transfer burn. Actually, first we have to do our escape burn, which is also our transfer burn. Anyhow, we're burning a lot of fuel. And where, you might ask, are we burning? There, towards Jewel. Yep, we're going to perform, or we're going to try to perform, a mission where we're going to visit all of the five moons of Jewel. And while we look at our blue little planet, we have now already traversed the solar system by the magic of video editing and are now using Tylo's massive gravity, since it is the largest moon of Jewel and probably, I think, also the largest moon in KSP in general. And we are already getting one of our little probes out there. Since Tylo and Lathe as well, which is the water moon, so to speak, since they are so big and uh, require that much delta V, I didn't inc include a lander that it is capable to get down there and back up again. I'm just sending little probes to land on the surface and then perform some science experiments. And that's what we're watching right about now. Yes, this little lathe probe is now landing in water, since lathe is basically almost only made of water. And yeah, while it is swimming in there, we're now already at Tylo. This is really just a fast forward through a jewel mission because if you're interested in a more detailed mission to all five moons of Jewel, I recommend you watch my Jewelishka series or also the Jeb Lost His Keys series. Both can be uh, watched by clicking one of the nice little things in the top right corner of this video. Okay, Tylo Probe coming right up. And since Tylo is not as easy to land on as a lot of other moons, yeah. Again! We had to do it again. And this kind of worked out in a weird way. Because, yeah, I lost uh, the landing leg and I lost the engines. But all the science equipment is still capable and working. And that's what actually this probe was all about. So, yeah, I call this a success. Okay. Once again, we have to get away from this... Uh, large grayish brown rock and our next target is of course Val no not Valentina the Kerbal Val the moon with two L okay and we are in the dark right now Jewel is blocking the Sun so <laughs> this is really black and after we get back into the Sun we're going to use our lander yes with a Kerbal this time so this little thing here has something around two and a half or two thousand meters per second of delta V, which should be enough to land on the Val and get back up again. And this is what we're going to do right about now. Again. Well, you can see that space is hard indeed. And there we go. We have our little scientist over here that is now planting a flag. Well, since we have the scientist, we need, of course, some remote control for this uh, lander to have it fully functional. And that's why the cruiser has this uh, relay dish on the bottom. 
This is also used to control the little probes that have landed on Tylo. And what you've just seen before was Bob. Bob is going to be the next target, but we're only going to do a flyby with the cruiser and we're going to use the lander solely to perform the circularization burn or the braking burn, whatever you want to call it, and land on this thing. Okay, once again getting out of the tube and then going to land on Bob, that little ugly space potato as I like to call it. Okay, Bob is fairly easy to land on and get back up again because its gravity is so minuscule. Basically, you could use your jetpack to do that. Okay, we have landed only on two legs. Look at that, balancing out. Fine. And once again, of course, the usual tradition of planting a flag on a planetary body. Now, uh, after we have escaped uh, Bob's sphere of influence, we performed a correction burn to get to pole. And we're also going to use uh, our lander to get to pole directly, the final moon of the jewel system. There we go. Interestingly, due to the magic of orbital dynamics, the lander got there first, even though uh, the cruiser left the sphere of influence of Bob a lot of time earlier. Anyhow, yeah, we're going to touch this down here, there we go. And you've guessed it, yes, we're going to plant another flag, there we go. Nice. Alright. The cruiser arrives 10 days later, and of course has still enough power to perform the trajectory correction needed to get circularized or captured by Paul. And we've done some nice little spacewalk to stretch our legs and now we're back in the cupola and watching our shadow on the surface of Paul. Okay, once we've done all we can, meaning all the signs, all the flagging, all everything, we get back to the cruiser and then yeah, that was a bit of a tricky thing because I didn't have very much delta V left. In fact, I had to even uh, perform an in-transit refuel thing, which was a weird maneuver to get this thing safely to Kerwin. So no, I did not have enough fuel for any of this and I had to send another vehicle and capture this and yeah, anyhow, we're now back. And we're back at Kerwin and yeah, that basically concludes the adventure of this here vehicle, which was kind of special because we launched it from underwater it kind of looks like the first cruiser I ever built, and it performed a Jewel 5 mission, sort of. Because we didn't land a Kerbal on every moon of Jewel. But I promised you, as you might have read in the title or description, not sure yet where I'm gonna put it, that there will be a big surprise in this video. And yeah. Well, after we have watched this wonderful camera movement, you're going to see exactly what I mean. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.